I think we're ready to get back to work. Just before the break, I had two speakers lined up. What I would like to do is to allow those two speakers to have a chance to come to the podium and then take a sense of the meeting whether discussion has gone on long enough. So uh, before we do that, uh, <laughs> Mr. Long. Tinius, I would like to ask you if you have any information that might respond to any of the questions that were raised, and if so, would you like to speak? Yes. Quiet before you speak, could we uh, have a little bit of quiet in the back of the room so that the speaker can be heard? Thank you. Uh, ju just quickly, for the record, I'd like to address a couple of the concerns that were brought up by other speakers. One was the, the highway committee, the town highway, highway committee, uh, that brought up the concern about the queuing. And what they didn't address is that in this plan, and they don't show it, they don't show it on the plan that you've seen, that in this plan, there is a right turn lane coming out. So that was not addressed. Uh, the second thing is that anybody, I, I'm not sure if, if any of those people that have that looked at this had experience or made the decision based on experience of their own personal experiences trying to get in and out of Winnicott Road or, or Lafayette Road. And if they had, I don't see how they could go with the apples to apples, you know, and that one is, is going to be safer than the other. I'd rather wait an extra minute to not take my life into my hands by looking three ways and maybe four if a pedestrian is crossing the street from either the apartments or Fast Eddie's or any of the businesses on that side of the street. And there have been one pedestrian fatality right there, uh, and another one that's been maimed for life. And I'm told that you know there's another one, also a third that I don't know about. So I think that this is a this is something that needs to be addressed. It's not going to change my financial picture at all. We're gaining four parking spots. It's not a matter of I'm not doing this for that. I think it's an enhancement to the property, and it's a safety issue. The enhancement is in, in the aesthetics more than the functionality. And the functionality comes from the improvements in safety. So I, I don't see how the town loses. The town's not getting money for that land now. Uh, it's, it's, it's sitting there uh, in a use that's, in my opinion, a hazard. So. I hope that you I hope that you consider the facts when you look at this, and I know I don't know where those that safety committee that highway safety committee where whether they live here, or they live in a different part of the state. But if they live here and they've had experienced this, I ask them to take a second look at it and also have the state the facts that there is a right hand lane that goes out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Genius. As I said, before the um, break, we had uh, Ms. Latimer and Mr. Pierce lined up to speak. So we will take those two, and then I'll take a sense of the meeting. Hi, Eileen Latimer, 251 Mill Road. Interesting address. It was mentioned by the Highway Safety Committee that it, we would be impacted on Mill Road if this was done. And I, I quite honestly don't see how. We get impacted by a lot of things, and traffic does pick up. But I don't see how the Fountainhead at this corner would impact Mill Road really in the least. Um, second of all, about 10, 12 years ago, I'm not exactly sure of the date, I witnessed um, an accident that killed a senior citizen. Um, and the result of, or I should say what precipitated that accident, was somebody driving out under the speed limit, but having so many things to look at that when he turned his head, he was in the crosswalk and could not avoid her. I think I've been haunted by that scene for this whole period of time, every time I go through that intersection. And I don't know how many times I've said, I wish we would just make this a T and, and cut off all the spurs that we have and make it a very simple intersection, even if we have to put a light. I'm never for selling town property. But in this particular instance, I don't think we're losing anything. I think we have 
one of those thoughtful planning sessions that we actually stand to gain in this, in this particular situation with a, a town budget that certainly can't afford to address this right now and add one more thing to it. We'll be still talking about this 10 years down the road of woulda, shoulda, you know, wouldn't it be nice if it was simple and we didn't have to look 16 different ways and people weren't at jeopardy in that corner and they weren't writing things about having one of the most dangerous intersections. And this alliance perhaps with an old tried and true and trusted neighbor, this isn't somebody coming to town that we don't know what they're capable of doing or how they're gonna build it or if it'll be aesthetically pleasing on that corner or not, um, we know who John Tinius is. We know what the galley hatch has been. It's one of our foremost businesses on Route 1 and in this town. So I don't think we have um, any guesswork to do there. And I, I am in f I'm for changing this. I think that this is one way to defray town costs and fix something that has for a very long time needed to be fixed. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mr. Pierce. Mike Pierce, 16 Hebben Avenue. I'm only concerned about one part of this because I think the voters will decide if it's a good idea about eliminating a, uh, an old intersection that I happen to like, but I can also see a little bit of the argument looking at it from the other point of view. If I had to decide myself, I'd probably be against it. But I am concerned about one aspect with the agreement with the town. If Let's say, for example, the land is appraised a million dollars, for example, and the cost to put the improvements to the intersection is at half a million dollars. What happens to that, those funds? And I'd like to make an amendment to this saying that any excess funds go to the general fund. I have that in writing, Mr. Pierce. Do we have a second? I think that's a good idea is because in my mind that property is probably because of the galley hatch being there uh, is probably some of the most valuable property in town uh, uh, especially on Lafayette a, a road and uh, if we just give it to the the land to the if we just give the land to the galley hatch and that's I don't have a problem with that what do we get in exchange <coughs> well <coughs> the uh, uh, intersection might end up being just a stop sign or something. We don't have any definition of what we're getting in return. So I think what we ought to do is at least say, if the land is valued at X dollars or whatever, any excess of value will be given to the general fund over the cost of improving the intersection. And that's my only thought there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Is there anyone that would like to speak to the Pierce Amendment? Seeing none, are you ready for the vote? Those of you that are in favor of the Pierce Amendment, which is to, have you got it all? Why don't you step forward and see if you like the language that they're putting up. Does that, does that fulfill the requirement you think it fills out? Um. Uh, probably before the period at the end, why don't you say with any excess funds? to be deposited to the general fund. Are you okay with that, Mr. Pierce? Oh, absolutely. I yield to an attorney any day. <laughs> Almost anybody on English language anymore. The Pierce Amendment would add the language that you see there printed in red. With any excess monies to be relinquished. Deposited. No. 
We're still correcting? Depositing. Depositing. To be deposited? To be deposited to the general fund. Pierce, does that work? I think that'll work if it's going to work legally. I just. What about the question mark at the end? It is a question. I think they're all questions, aren't they? Okay. You're all set with that? So the Pierce Amendment would add the language that says, with any excess monies to be deposited to the general fund. Those of you that are in support of the amendment, I asked if anyone wanted to. No one stood up. I asked if you were ready to vote. And Pardon me? I'm not ready to vote. I can make it a point. If you can make it brief, Mr. Moody, please do so. <clears throat> How does this town meeting vote overcome state law, Chapter 3, laws of 1983, that says the town selling any interest in land goes into the real estate trust fund? Any response from the selectmen or the attorney? I would say this is highway money rather than I haven't seen what Mr. Moody's talking about, but uh, we're talking highway discontinuance as opposed to probably highway discontinuance. Are we now ready for the vote on the amendment? No, it's a question for the whole. It's a question for the whole for the whole article. Those of you that are in support of the Pierce Amendment. Please raise your purple card. Those of you that are opposed, I declare that the Pierce Amendment has passed. Those were the speakers that were lined up. However, I see our uh, fire chief here, and I don't know if you want to speak to the safety issue or what you'd like to yes, do, I'd like but to if you'd like to add some comments, we'd love to have it. Speak directly to Article 39. As part of the regular process, the planning board regularly seeks input from the department heads. Due to the uniqueness of this particular plan, uh, we actually met and reviewed it together. And just from the fire department's perspective, uh, I'd like to address the issue of signalization. Signalization provides us the capability of controlling the intersection during emergency response. That's extremely important for us because we get to control which light is green for our passage and which lights are red to control the movement of the regular traffic. Secondly, a number of the accidents that have occurred in this particular area have been vehicle pedestrian accidents. Signalization also gives you the ability to control the lights for crosswalks, reducing the uh, potential for vehicle pedestrian accidents. So remember that that's also two important factors and two important reasons why we consider signalization of these intersections. Yeah. Thank you. Just one, yes. one final, if I could. Mr. Lally. One final. With all due respect to the uh, Highway Safety Committee, I think they whiffed on this one. Um, anytime you can make a dangerous intersection less dangerous, that's a plus. Uh, I've been to three fatal accidents there, one near fatal, and uh, many, many minor ones. And the, the things I've seen at that intersection could have most of them could have been prevent preventable. Um, the second part I'd like to bring up also is uh, also about town land. I think sometimes it's common sense. I think the land itself, as it sits, the value of the town, who knows? Uh, if it's going to be an improvement to the town, common sense for most people in this town to be improved, it, uh, like quality of life, I'm for it. Thank you. Thank you. We have been on this article for just about an hour. I think most everyone has had a chance to come up to speak to the article. And seeing no one else, I declare that the article will be appear on the ballot as amended. Madam Moderator, I move to restrict reconsideration of Articles 35 through 39. Second.
strict reconsideration for Articles 35 to 39. Is that correct, Mr. Workman? Yes, sir. All those in favor? Raise your voter card, down cards. All opposed? Articles 35 through 39 have been restricted from further reconsideration during this meeting. Article 40. To see if the Town of Hampton will vote to instruct the Board of Selectmen to investigate the creation of a municipally owned electric utility department with said investigation to include the possibility of placing overhead utility lines underground to help prevent extended losses of essential utility service. Majority vote required. Adoption of this article with no impact on the town's tax rate. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 40? So moved. Moved by Mr. Bateman, seconded by Mr. Griffin. Would anyone like to speak to Article 40? Mr. Bateman? I believe the article itself uh, addresses the fact that this is to investigate. Uh, this is the start of a conversation. This is a start of a developing idea. Um, further steps will take uh, months, including a second uh, posting and a second uh, vote. Um, this is not a rush to judgment on anything, but it is time to open uh, a discussion, frankly, amongst ourselves and amongst uh, experts in the field. Uh, this is Mr. the first step. Thank you, Mr. Bateman. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 40? Mr. Withey. Uh, Chuck Withey, uh, 36 Alexander Drive. Uh, it's been my observation that Unitil's reliability has been good over the last 11 years at least uh, since I've lived here and I don't think one catastrophic ice storm should define the utilities reliability you know I want to leave it to the experts uh, nothing against town town management uh, but I think the selectmen have other things to focus on uh, regarding the electric utility uh, I could stand here for an hour uh, with accolades uh, for Unitil I know people at Unitil. I also know what they do in the community. I know that they volunteer time, and they're a good community partner. But more importantly, as I said, they've been very reliable. And I think that has to go under consideration for how we spend our selectmen, who are very busy, uh, how they spend their time. Just one person's opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Withey. Ms. Kaiser? Or 7 Palmer Street. I view this warrant article as a knee jerk re uh, reaction to a terrible situation that occurred. Uh, I know that Unitil made some mistakes. I know that they were shorthanded. However, one part of this article really bothers me, and that is uh, placing the overhead utility lines underground, etc. When we were Doing the reconstruction of Route 1, several of us requested that they look into placing the lines underground, and at that time, we were told it was far too expensive, we were going to continue with the overhead lines. At the time that the uh, new plant was put into service, we took a vote to require them to place the lines underground. They ignored that vote, and knowing they had much more money than we did, it evidently was never looked into further to bring them to enforce that vote that was taken by the town. So I, I understand the selectmen wanting to investigate this to see what could be done to prevent anything further, but as Chuck Withy said, uh, Unitil is uh, the expert, they are the experts, and I don't think that we should be looking into taking over this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Geiser. Anyone further? Yes, sir. Dave Hollingworth, 6 Curtis Street in Hampton, um, a lifelong resident of Hampton. And I'd like to uh, uh, read a letter uh, from Executive Councilor Beverly Hollingworth, uh, if I could. Yes, you may. Uh, while I can understand the Suckman voted to present this article at the town meeting and vote 11 days after the worst ice storm in our history, I respectfully submit the thought of municipalizing, uh, municipalization of the electric system in Hampton. It's not in the best interest of the town. 
While the formation of a committee to study municipal education might seem innocuous, an adequate study would require the expenditure of substantial dollars in hiring consultants to study all aspects and to consider the impact of such a large venture. The legal process in taking over utility would be ex extraordinary. Where would the money come from for this purchase? Do we have the personnel expertise to run a utility? In the end, what would we, we accomplish? What liabilities will be assumed? The town spends money to pr purchase the utility. What will the town not be able to do? Shouldn't we be spending our efforts, money on dealing with these, this year's and succeeding year's budgets and other serious town issues? Let's look at the facts. The ice storm of December 11th was the most destructive storm the region has ever encountered. An estimated 1 million electric customers were affected. More than half of all customers in New Hampshire were out of power, including 41,000 Unitil customers. The devastation was the worst that the operating personnel at Unitel had ever witnessed. Ice accumulation on trees and limbs eventually caused the whole area's electric system in our town <coughs> to collapse. Lines and equipment were crushed, poles were snapped in half, and meters were torn off homes. Most people have very little idea what the company and its employees have gone through. The efforts of Unitil employees and the crews and outside crews they brought in from as far away as Tennessee were nothing short of heroic. They worked day and night until all customers were stored. Let's look at solutions that make the most sense. Let's look at what Unitil has done since the storm. They've met with the town manager, police and fire chiefs, and director of public works to review, initiate, and improve procedures. Initiated an internal self-assessment and retained a formal chair, the Massachusetts Public Utilities Commission, to review performance and recommend improved policies. They've implemented new emergency operations and communication procedures which were first used during the ice storm of January 6th to 8th. These procedures include quicker mobilization of emergency response crews. Again, I respectfully urge that the town meeting on March 10th this article be defeated. As a long time and president of public official, I certainly understand and respect the selectmen initiating this. However, I suggest there's a far better way to utilize the town's dollars and time. We can do this in a cooperative effort with Unitil which has been a long time partner with the town of Hampton. Thank you for the attention, Beverly Hollingworth. And I'm, I'm also going to add that um, I'm a 25 year, um, in full disclosure, I'm a 25 year employee of Unitil, and um, uh, thank you for giving me attention. Thank you, Mr. Hollingworth. Mr. Warburg. Mr. Moderator, I speak on behalf of Unitil, actually, uh, and proud to do so as a taxpayer, a former selectman, and currently state park superintendent. And in all those capacities, I've had the ability to work with the fine management and team of Unitil. And I just want to recognize in the audience today is not only a Hampton resident, but a, an executive of Unitil, Ray Letourneau, who those of us who have worked uh, with Ray on many projects in this community know how well uh, he does the job and his people, and I think we should be proud of that. There's no question, and I've spoken with Chairman Lally and other members of the board, that during the December 11th and beyond time frame for a few days for some, more than a few days for others, there was some disruptions. But let's face it, throughout major parts of the state, and I happen to have a responsibility for literally half the state of New Hampshire, there were some other major issues that took place with power issues with other companies and other homes and businesses and everything else. Since that time, while this article was being developed, I want to applaud Chairman Lally and others and town manager. They've met with our department heads and the Unitil executives and other folks, and we have made a lot of progress, and that's the way it should be. I was, quite frankly, very concerned with some of the comments I've read in the papers and heard uh, throughout the last few months uh, about doing this sort of thing, and, and almost like throwing Unitil under the bus. Ladies and gentlemen, Unitil is part of that great area in town, and I know Mrs. Woolsey knows years ago when Liberty Lane was developed, a lot of fine corporations came in here and still to this day have. I've been fortunate among many people who have worked very closely, and I have to tell you, I've called Unitil in the middle of the night during the day, weekends, and had a very good response, and they are good team players. They want to work. They've called meetings, and the chairman of, of the company himself has been available to, to let the residents know, not only in this area, because Unitel has responsibility, as many of you know, throughout Massachusetts and other parts, to take care of these situations so that, as Mr. Bateman alluded to, in months and years to come, we'll address a lot of these. I, at this time, 
I certainly want to applaud uh, David Hollingworth, too, and uh, Councilor Hollingworth's comments regarding uh, the situation. But I would like to um, ask the moderator, uh, through Chairman Lally, with that being the case, and we know a lot of progress has been made, I would like to see if the Board of Selectmen here today would either do, uh, do one of two things, either withdraw Article 40, or the alternative at very best, but to add text at the end of the article that says the Board of Selectmen recommends that the voters vote no on this article. We, we well, I'm just asking the question. Um, we have been talking about today a lot of things, and one of the things that I'm going to continue to hype on is investing in building within our community and for the future. We should not be tearing down. We should be building up. And I think people have moved on from this. And I certainly want to see it come out in a positive realm. If this can happen, then I urge everyone uh, to vote no on this article. It serves no purpose. And quite frankly, two of the statements in the article almost sound like two separate situations. The underground uh, utilities is a totally separate situation than looking into form a municipal, a municipal electric, electrical utility. And in summary, Mr. Moderator, I'm going to concur with my friend Chuck Withy said. This Board of Selectmen, as well as other boards in town and throughout this area, have more important things on their plate right now and a, and a lot of important things that were addressed starting with our budget today than to worry about creating a situation where it pits good people against each other. Many of the Unitil employees live in this community and they pay taxes. Some of them were hurt by some of the statements. I have even offered my services as somebody who's always tried to bring people together to continue to go down that road. So let's move on from this. I want to say on behalf of a lot of people I know, I applaud the work of Unitil and our other fine corporations in this town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warburton. Mr. Gopalan. Mark Gopalan, 21 Mill Lane. <clears throat> I, too, second a lot of that uh, uh, sentiments. I think, realistically, though, the amount of capital investment that we have to put forth on this uh, I don't think that we have the wherewithal to do it. As a matter of fact, we are struggling to get fire station improvements, and here we are trying to take over a whole business. And I think that you probably will have a more impact if you were to work with them and also try to develop in some of the areas where the public housing and the senior citizens' housing you could probably adopt some defensive measure by having a generator installed so that you don't have to transport those people over the stairs to uh, uh, shelters and so forth. So some of those areas you could work on rather than wasting time on this because I don't really think that we have the capital to do this. Thank you, Mr. Gopal. Mr. Bryder. Yes, I too think this is a... Uh Although well-intended article, I think, it, uh, I, I think it would take a lot of wasted time and energy. And I would hope that the, uh, the Board of Selectmen, instead of going after UNITO, which, granted, they dropped the ball, and they deserve some of the comments they got. But I think there's more important things out there. We have to, like Mr. Gopalan said, we have to start working with issues as shelters, as what we're going to do. We, they've talked about it at the Selectmen Committee. I would hope that they were going to continue to bring that forward and, and work on articles like that. I think it would be a lot better time spent and energy spent because there are more, more emergencies out there than just electrical storms, and we need to be, be prepared for all of them. And I think we need to work towards that, and I think the energy would be better spent doing that than trying to take over the electric company. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Ms. Ladder. I, too, am looking at this article as two separate pieces, and I don't think it was so much a knee-jerk by the town manager and the selectmen, but a response to a lot of angry citizens in this town when they didn't have any power. I think it had more to do with that. Um, as far as UNITEL's employees, I think what the, of the employees that they had, they did an outstanding job in the elements in all hours. They're just doing their job, folks. The problem is there weren't enough of them. By UNITEL's own admission, they had eight crews, eight totally. And how many communities between Massachusetts and New Hampshire do we have? I can't even give you that answer right now, but I'm willing to bet you it's more than eight, which means we had less than one truck per community. 
I think that's where the problem lies. I don't think an article of this nature is needed. I think a lot of what's covered in this article, gentlemen, could go on to new business and internally in, on the board and not put out before the voters and probably shouldn't go out before the board is, uh, voters of this town. It's stuff that should be done. We should know how many crews. Do you know how many crews we have now? Do we know how many crews Unitil has? Do we know what their plans are when we have an emergency? Who are they going to call from and what the response time of that call is going to be? Do we have any? I don't have any of those answers and I've been asking since last month. I'm going to throw one little thing out there to you as far as not letting Unitil off the hook entirely and, and, and the spirit of this thing. My line broke off my house 10 days before the ice storm. And my electrician called Unitil and asked for a crew to come down and replace it. And they said that we had to call PS and H, and it was a PS and H crew that came down. So I guess what I'm throwing out there is in the cause of normal everyday business, nothing out of the ordinary, not an ice storm, just an old line on a 50-year-old house that needed to be replaced. The line was actually physically replaced by a PSNH crew. That would be okay if it was years ago when we paid, when we paid or some people paid more money to PSNH. But I'm paying more money to Unitil, and I'm being serviced by PSNH. So I think somewhere in all of this, we all have a lot of questions that I would like to have not seen on this Warren article, but I would most certainly like to see addressed. Um, and I think if we could go that route, um, I don't think on all the things that we talked about, I would love to think, or I should say, I would love to think that we could take on utility, become a utility, and the profits that go in everybody's pocket could defray our taxes. That would be a wonderful thing, but we can't even wrap ourselves around our own safety complexes, let alone venture this far out. So for now, I would be satisfied to really see the Board of Selectmen embrace this and really get a handle on what our services are so that the next time uh, PUC has a rate increase for us, we'll be able to have something there and something we want back. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latimer. Mr. Page? Mr. Moderator? Mr. Lowry. Yeah, just, who would have thought last month would be singing uh, Kumbaya and having a love fest with Unitel? <laughs> um, Mr. Cook, no. just, just to put things in perspective, I, I appreciate everybody getting up and, you know, spreading the love. But uh, I didn't have power for seven days, so I'm not going to forget that. I did talk to Mr. Letourneau and... Uh, Agreed. I don't, I don't think there's a snowball's chance in hell that this is going to pass. But I think a lot of people are upset, and I think there's still a lot of people upset. I watched news clippings of the uh, town meeting in Fitchburg, Mass, the other night, and uh, I thought they were going to have to call in some reinforcements there. Um, the, it might have been somewhat of a knee-jerk reaction to put this in, but I think at the time, a lot of people came to selectmen's meetings and they were very, very upset. Uh, people lost a lot of money, they lost time out of work, uh, they lost uh, property. Unitil obviously was, was buried, and we understand that. And the guys are up on the polls and they did an unbelievable job, and there was some very, very good and hard-working people there. But um, let, let's keep things in perspective. Uh, it wasn't great. And it was a very, very bad time. So uh, the article's on there. People will vote, as I say. Uh, I'm not going to vote for it. Um, I appreciate uh, the conversation I had with Mr. Letourneau. And uh, leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lally has me beat 7 to 6. I was out for 6 days. Any further questions? Any further comments on uh, Article 40? Seeing none, Article 40 will appear on the ballot as printed. Article, Article 41, shall the town vote to authorize but not require the Board of Selectmen to enter into an intermunicipal agreement between the towns of Hampton and Hampton Falls for the purposes of constructing and maintaining a pedestrian walkway, bicycle path, over the existing old stage road bridge between the two towns and to perform such repair and rehabilitation 
of the existing bridge itself as may be necessary to properly support such walkway path, provided that no local property tax revenues are to be utilized for said purposes, utilizing instead such grants and privately donated funds that are received for those purposes. Majority vote required. Fiscal impact note from the Finance Department. Adoption of this article will have no impact on the town's tax rate where the source of funding for the work shall be limited to grants and privately donated funds. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 41? Moved by Mr. Page. Do I have second. a second? Seconded by Mr. Bateman. Uh, Mr. Page, would you like to speak to Article 41? Yes, Nathan Page, uh, 200 Drakeside Road. Um, the Hampton Conservation Commission, along with the Hampton Falls Conservation Commission, have been working for over a year on the, the, the Coffin Mill Dam, uh, Dam Bridge. No, if every, everyone knows that as the old stage road bridge, no one, very few know the real name. But the we were trying to get that rehabilitated, reopened, so you can walk across it. There's a lot of people that are using it now. The railings are not safe. It's, it's posted, closed, and people are still using it. Uh, and we're looking at uh, getting it reopened for pedestrians, no vehicle traffic to try to make it as safe as possible. That bridge was built in 1825, and it was closed in 2002. In order to do that, we have to re make the railings up to 42 inches high uh, on that bridge to make it safe for pedestrian traffic. It has to be higher than vehicular traffic. The DOT has signed off stating that the bridge is safe but for pedestrian use. We're up to 85 pounds per square foot. As to we have a... a stamped uh, signed document from engineers stating that it's safe to use this bridge. We would like to take and connect the two pieces of conservation land from the Herd Farm, which is on the Hampton Falls side, and the Hampton side as well, to create a walking trail and biking trails to connect these two pieces of conservation land. The town of Hampton Falls, I know there's been some discussion in the past that they're, uh, they're kind of a red-headed stepchild of Hampton. Uh, hope they don't, they don't get 22 over there. <laughs> but they, uh, that they've been doing the, the yeoman's work. They've got a great committee. They have the majority of people that want to donate money uh, to make this happen. We've got uh, quite a bit of money uh, promised. We just have to have a way to legally accept the funds. Uh, but I'd like to see us vote for this and get that bridge reopened for safe pedestrian and bicycle traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Page. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 41? Bob? Mr. Gerald. Uh, just as an example, this was another article where we had at one time considered the acceptance of monies in trust and finding, as we did from DRA, that we had not accepted RSA 3119. Uh, we eliminated that part of it and then course, that's another reason why you see uh, Article 50, which talks about acceptance of funds and trust, uh, which goes beyond unanticipated grants and so forth. So that's just by way of explanation. Thank you, Mr. Gerald. Anyone, anything further? Mr. Gopalan, on Article 41. Uh, Mark Gopalan, uh, 20 Windmill Lane. Quick question. Let's assume that this article passes and we have this bike path and uh, so forth. What liability, uh, first of all, what maintenance costs do we have to bear as a town? And also, what liability do we have to carry for that road and the safety of it? And, and how is that going to be determined? Mr. Gopalan has asked two questions, one relative to uh, maintenance costs going forward and the other to liability going forward. Mr. Gerald or anyone on the Board of Selectmen, town manager, wish to address that? Uh, well, this already is a liability at this point. Uh, the funds that would be used here would be donated uh, along with grants and can only improve the situation. The, the, as what has happened so far is that a Jersey barrier is in place that blocks off that uh, bridge, and uh, thankfully this draws attention to it. There were some holes in the surface of that uh, bridge also that uh, when this came to the attention of the manager, he ordered that those holes be immediately filled in. Um, it already is a liability, and this is to make it better. Thank you, Mr. Gerald. Mr. Page. Yes, uh, the committee 
is looking at raising funds to put in perpetuity to maintain this bridge as well, so that will, hopefully it will be at no uh, cost to the town. Who knows what happens in the future, but we were hoping to put enough money aside to maintain the bridge for a perpetuity at some point in time. And the uh, and it's like the attorney says there is, we currently have more. There's more liability there now than there would be with us fixing the handrails because people are using it in a closed. Well, it's closed. People are pushing baby carriages across it and lifting stuff up around the over over the Jersey barriers, carrying stuff around them. So it would be much better to get it safe and be less of a liability to the community. Thank you, Mr. Page. Anyone else wish to be heard on Article 41? Seeing none, Article 41 will appear on the ballot as printed. Article 42, to see if the Town of Hampton will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to lease the district fire station on Ashworth Avenue from the Hampton Beach Village District to ensure the continued availability of fire protection services from a location within the district subject to such terms and conditions which the selectmen deemed to be in the best interest of the town and consistent with the goals set forth in this article and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into renewals of said lease, all for a period of no more than five years from the passage of this article by the town and the Hampton Beach Village District. Majority vote required. Adoption of this article will have no impact on the town's tax rate. I'll entertain a motion to open discussion on Article 42. So moved. Moved by Mr. Workman. Seconded by Mr. Nichols. Mr. Workman, would you like to speak to Article 42? Yeah, in summary, we talked earlier about the need for two fire stations in town. We are looking to put uh, some money into the uptown station for now, but we need to continue to provide fire service down the beach. Continuing the lease that we have now is not an option. It, it has to expire by its own term. It doesn't have a renewal language therein, so we need to have a new author. Thank you, Mr. Workman. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 42? Seeing none, Article 42 will appear on the ballot as printed. Article 43, shall the Town of Hampton vote to designate five years from November 17, 2009 as the length of the first renewal period of the intermunicipal agreement for treatment and disposal of wastewater between the Town of Hampton and Rye? Majority vote required. The initial 20-year agreement, which was entered into in 1989 has enabled the town of Rye to dispose of its wastewater at Hampton's wastewater treatment plant in return for Rye's initial investment of approximately $5 million to establish a Hampton-Rye sewer connection and Rye's continuing payment to Hampton of a proportionate share based on gallonage of both A, the use of Hampton's facilities and B, Hampton's capital costs. For the year 2008, these payments from Rye to Hampton totaled $93,000. $27. By its terms, this agreement is automatically renewable for successive periods of not less than five years unless two years prior to the termination date either party notifies the other that the agreement shall not be renewed. No Hampton Town meeting vote directing the Board of Selectmen to notify Rye of non-renewal was taken prior to the November 17, 2007 deadline for providing such notice in order to avoid a first renewal period. Adoption of this article have no impact on the town's tax rate. Do I have a motion to open discussion on Article 43, moved by Mr. Lally, seconded Second. by Mr. Bateman. Mr. Lally, would you like to speak to the article? I think basically if you get on to the last paragraph, uh, no Hampton Town meeting vote directed the Board of Selectmen to notify Rye of non-renewal was taken prior to November 2007 deadline, providing for such notice. Um, and that is a matter of uh, housekeeping also. Uh, also, we do, last year, uh, in the article, you could see uh, the town of Rice sent us payment of $93,000 for the use. Uh, it's maintained the uh, infrastructure to the connection, and uh, basically, the article stands on its face. Thank you, Mr. Lally. Ms. Wolsey. Basically, addressing 43 and 44, to get because they're interrelated, um, I'm very disappointed that this slipped through the cracks before the 2007 deadline. Uh, I was the only selectman to oppose this intermunicipal agreement. I'm still opposed while we have half of our town not on sewer, and I am thoroughly in favor of the next article. I can see why you have to do Article 43, but I'm thoroughly in favor of Article 44. Get out of that agreement and let these towns who's in the surrounding areas take care of their own sewage. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Anyone else? Mr. Moody. <laughs> yeah, 
Hampton is the sewer, the sewage capital of the seacoast. Put that on the old Chamber of Commerce decal. Uh, yeah, it's too, too late, according to this article, uh, although the next annual town meeting after that rye sewer agreement was signed at a work session with only one rye selectman present. The town meeting voted Article 46, March 1990, to notify the selectmen of Rye that we're not interested. And the moderator and town clerk certified the vote, and they sent it certified mail to the selectmen in Rye, and they laughed. Oh, we got a signed agreement, even though at that time the selectmen of Hampton had no authority on the sewer. In fact, they didn't. The next day after they signed it in October of 1989, the town, special town meeting took that authority away from them. And the contract was not effective for 30 days, so they really didn't have the authority uh, to go forward with that, especially after the year before the article in our warrant, Rye had offered 75 percent to pay the cost of the nor Northeast Interceptor. Northampton Line, Ocean Boulevard, High Street, across country to the plant. And the town meeting turned it down overwhelmingly, and yet a year or so later, the selectmen signed that contract with no 75% of the $5 million cost of the Northeast Interceptor being paid <coughs> by Rye. What Rye did pay was a pay-in, $382,000 lump sum in January of 1990. They had already been under court order to have sewage for Rye Beach, a rich area. And they had already designed a wastewater treatment plant, a small one. But they got the eyes of four selectmen in Hampton, and they got the 10-mile connection to our sewer treatment plant, in which we have to uh, treat more sewage, transfer more sludge to Rochester, dump more treated wastewater into the harbor. I would think that this article should have had another lump sum payment. What they pay now is just the personnel costs and treatment costs and chemical costs and a share of the capital costs to prove the plant, or repair the plant. But they don't, there's nothing in here to, for another five year term for a buy in. So the basis of 382000 for 20 years, 100000 for five years, for the first renewal period, should be sufficient. And therefore, I offer an amendment, Mr. Moderator, <coughs> to add before parentheses, majority vote required, end parentheses. In addition to paying a proportionate share of the costs of costs based on gallonage, treated, and capital costs, Rye shall pay $100,000 for the five-year first renewal period by April 1, 2010, in keeping with the $382,000 prepaid in 1990 for the original 20-year period. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Moody, seconded by Ms. Sorrell. And while we're working on getting that amendment on the screen, is that a topic that the Board of Selectmen or its council wishes to address in any fashion. Have you heard, Mr. Gerald? Or yes. Uh, just in, as a matter of a couple of points, the selectmen of Hampton, I believe, had the authority to enter into this agreement when they did, regardless of the vote that may have been taken the next well, let me, day. Let me jump right just to Mr. Moody's amendment. Is, I mean, I want to I don't want to go down a path, as someone has suggested earlier today, where we... No, 
I'm, look at I'm something. getting there. Okay. Uh, his point about the vote to terminate this agreement that was taken a year later uh, is not the same as a non-renewal. I really, Mr. Chair, I, I want to focus on this language and whether this language is quote unquote legal or whether we're getting ourselves into a situation where we're going to put something on the warrant and then we're going to find later on if it passes that. Agreed. Okay. And so I think we're bound by the terms of the original agreement, which calls for if it's not renewed, a renewal on the same terms. I think Mr. Moody's amendment is adding a term to the contract that isn't there and can't legally be added 20 years after the fact. What we're dealing now is with how long a renewal is given to the initial agreement. Otherwise, you're looking at a new agreement. And I don't think we can, in, it's not enforceable to, uh, to add a term after the fact. So the, uh, the opinion is that it's doubtful as to whether the Moody Amendment is going to be enforceable against the town of Rye? Correct. But nevertheless, we have the Moody Amendment, and we have it um, seconded, and we're going to get it up on the screen, and I'm going to let anyone who wants to address it. Mr. Moody, is that how you intend your amendment to read? Anyone wish to speak to the Moody Amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the Moody Amendment, raise your voter card, please. Town card. All opposed? I'm going to ask to take a count on this, please. So we're going to go back to the affirmative in a moment. Let me get the uh, assistant moderators in place, and we'll, we'll take a count. Could I ask all cards to go down at this moment? While these gentlemen decide <coughs> the portions of the room that they're covering. Could have done it back in 2000. And somebody's got to cover the stage Ooh. as well. Okay, are we ready? All those in favor of the Moody Amendment, please raise your voter card. Got your count on that? All those opposed to the Moody Amendment, please raise your voter card. I declare that the Moody Amendment has been defeated. There were 13 votes in the affirmative. There are 22 votes in the negative. So we're back 
to Article 43 as it is printed. Mr. Bridal to speak to Article 43. <coughs> we all know what George would have said about this article. And I just, I think it stinks that we, we're taking sewer from Rye for 20 years when we still have a portion of this town that doesn't even have sewage. So I want to hope that the Board of Selectmen would take that into consideration. Because there's an area of the west side of 95 that does not have sewer. And it doesn't look like we're ever going to get it. And we shouldn't be taking sewage from another town when we can't get it in our own town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. <coughs> Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 43? No, right here, right here. Please. Okay. And then Mr. Rice. Yes, please. Can I try to make a different amendment? Yes, you can, as long as you have a second. Uh, it says here that you have to have two years notice. So can we amend this to say that we designate three years from November 17th, 2009 to be reviewed in 2012? Before I even look for a second, Mr. Gerald, do you have any thoughts on? I, I really need to see the amendment in context okay. without. All right. Yes, I need, ma'am, I need you to state your name and address. Oh, my name is Marcella Quant. I live at 4 Quinlan Lane. And I want to say we designate three years from November 17, 2009, to be reviewed. in 2012 and the reason I'm changing this amendment and hope that it could go through is because I understand the first amendment was not legal. Ms. Kwan, I got to ask for some assistance on this and, and we're going to have to get a, a, a second but if you look at your article 43 for a moment ma'am yes. and are you referring to, artic, uh, to paragraph 3 line 2 where it says the line begins five years? Shall the town of Hampton vote to designate no, five? No, no, ma'am. Go down to the third paragraph. Okay. Third paragraph, second line. Okay. Of Are you seeking to change the five years to three years? Yes. Okay. And then if you drop down to Line four of that paragraph, are you seeking to change November 17? Yes. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No. Um, I was looking at the first line, actually. Shall the town designate three years from November 17, 2009, okay. to be reviewed in 2012, which I thought would be two years before the end of the next five years. thought if they could review it in 2012, that would meet the, the, the part that says you have to give them notice two years before the five years is up. Okay. So the intent of Ms. Quant's amendment is to change paragraph one so that it reads, shall the town of Hampton vote to designate three years from November 17, 2009 as the length of the first renewal period? Yes. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Seconded by Mr. Bridal. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. Let me just get it into the. Your name. Doesn't have to be mutually agreed upon. Don't we point it out? Gerald. Uh, yes. I, what is attempted to be changed here is a term of the agreement itself, which indicated that the agreement shall be renewed for successive periods of not less than five years. 
unless two years prior to the termination, either party notifies the other that the agreement shall not be renewed. So what the selectmen have chosen as a renewal period is the minimum amount of years that a renewal is required under its terms. So I would think that would not be legal. Thank you. So Ms. Plant, I think what Attorney Gerald has, uh, has advised is that we're stuck with the five years because it's already in, in the agreement. So I'm going to ask if you would withdraw your, uh, based on, on that opinion, would you withdraw your amendment? I withdraw my amendment. And would Mr. Bridal withdraw the second? Thank you. All right, so we're still back to Article 43 as it originally um, appears, and I have to ask Christina to, to get back to the original language. Thank you. Mrs. Searle on Article 43. Mr. I'm Mr. sorry, Chief? I'm sorry. I did not see Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice. Um, I think that, that maybe we need to take a look at this thing from a slightly different uh, perspective. <coughs> The town of the, an agreement was made in good faith to assist the town of Rye 20 years <coughs> ago, and it was to help them by allowing them, if they built a five-mile pipeline at their cost or a five million dollars worth of pipeline at their cost, to bring their wastewater down to our sewage treatment plant because we had excess capacity, and as long as they paid their own way and it didn't cost the town of Hampton anything, that we would agree to process that. Now, I can see this being an issue if we were critically close to, and we knew that within this time period, we were definitely going to be without that capacity. But as long as they are paying for us, I, for, for us to get the money from them helps to fray the existing cost day to day of that plant. This amount, whatever amount we've been getting from them, we're not going to cut down the plant by a little bit and ch save a few pennies worth of, uh, of, of operating cost. And as long as we get an additional revenue from Rye, it helps us. Now, a couple of people have said, uh, and, and I agree with you, yeah, we, maybe we ought to have uh, sewer on the west side of town. That's a totally separate issue. If this uh, amendment or if this article passes or fails, it will have absolutely <coughs> no impact whatsoever <coughs> on whether we're going to have uh, sewer on the other side, of, on the west side of town. And to say that it does, it means it makes this a spite article. If, you, if I can't have it, you can't, I'm going to get even with you. That's the wrong way to govern the town. This thing needs to be done on its own face value. If we vote to stop accepting the wastewater from Rye, we're screwing the town of Rye, and we're going to force them to pay a hell of a lot more than what they're doing now. They're going to have, we're going to impact all the citizens of Rye. I don't care what you think of the citizens of Rye. Let's be fair and treat them the way we would treat ourselves, and, and not force them to have to build a brand new wastewater treatment plant for 10, 15, 20 million dollars or whatever it's going to cost. I don't know. Better we should continue. We want to increase the rate that we charge them for what we process. I think that would be far, far superior to this. But let's not screw the town of Rye just to cut off our nose to spite our face. Uh, let's help our neighbors and get our money's worth from it until such time as it's a critical thing for our capacity. When we get close to capacity, yeah, then we've got to give them notice. Maybe we're there now, I don't know, and I don't know whether this was done in cons consultation with Rye and they know this is coming, or whether, whether this is a unilateral bomb that we're going to throw in the middle of their budget process. So I hope we would reconsider this. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Ms. Geyser. And before she um, addresses the body, Article 43, as I understand it, sets a renewal period and has been explained by town council that sets it at the earliest possible date. Article 44, as Ms. Woolsey pointed out, is a related article, so there's opportunity to address this um, disagreement in Article 44 as well. Ms. Kaiser, relative to the renewal period. Thank you. I was just curious, is this not a moot issue? Because in reading that last paragraph, the third paragraph, by its terms, this agreement is automatically renewable for successive periods of not less than five years. So it seems to me that this has to be automatically done according to the original agreement. So I mean, we were forced into a yes vote on this. And then in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the next article, we can address what happens in the year 2012. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Geyser. Mrs. Searle. Mr. Moderator, I have a question. What happens if the voters vote no and this does not pass? 
why is this on the warrant? Uh, Mr. Carroll? The purpose is to uh, designate which has what hasn't been designated, which is the term of the renewal period. Somebody has to decide what is the renewal period. It's not less than five years. And this is uh, the town meeting's opportunity to designate the number of years at the minimum. So it sounds like the town so is opting to define the renewal, uh, renewal period as the minimum amount. If this is rejected, I suppose it could be construed as a, um, as a sentiment from the town that the renewal period should be longer. But the, the council has told us that we can't make the renewal period any shorter than five years because that five-year minimum is in the agreement that the town has already executed. That's correct. So if you vote yes, you get five years. If you vote no, then you get the clock something isn't longer. Uh, apparently. So a yes starts the clock ticking on the minimum amount of time. Five years. Okay. Mr. Page. Uh, Nathan Page, Drake Side Road. I remember being at that meeting 20 years ago. Um, I have a quick question. For the, it, the way the warrant article reads, the it, um, in this, the, the paragraph fourth, uh, third line down, it says, in return for a rise, initial investment of approximately five million dollars. If I hadn't been at the original meeting, I might think that the town of Rye gave Hampton five million dollars by reading this article. And it's, they spent $5 million to get to us to save them X number of million dollars more. So it's not, it, it's very misleading the way that's written. I, I don't know if, uh, if, that five, if that sentence should come right out of there so we don't confuse the public any further. It sounds like they gave us $5 million. If they'd like to continue with us, and we want to and we want to reopen negotiations. Maybe they would like to run another line back to Rye, and give us a discharge outside of Hampton Harbor, so we can stop putting fresh water into our clam flats, causing red tide, and other problems with our marsh. We can maybe we can put half the water up the up the street a bit to uh, dilute the um, fresh water in the ocean that way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Page. Ms. Raymond. Sharon Raymond, Two Lamps and Lane. Um, with respect to our treatment plant, um, co contradicting uh, Mr. Rice's statement, there is we are reducing our capacity. We're up to 87 percent, which, in as far as New Hampshire DES looks at, now they look at every connection that you add. We are above 80 percent, and we are in that limiting capacity point. So we have to be careful how much we add to the treatment plant. So it is limiting our ability to add wastewater and discharge to to our treatment plant. So just clarifying that we don't have a lot of excess capacity now, and it is something to take into consideration. Ms. Raymond, then Mr. Moody, and then the question. Uh, just a, a couple of <clears throat> points. Uh, because this was contract was done in such a hurry, because the next day the special town meeting had that on the warrant to take their authority away, they got a verbal agreement from the attorney representing Rye and that Rye selectman uh, that they would sewer in Hampton three properties, two motels and a house on the east side of Ocean Boulevard from the North Hampton line to Norris Lane. They reneged on that and it cost us over 100000 to run that line. When they got this agreement, they changed their zoning on Rye Beach and, uh, and the coverage in the Portsmouth Herald, people speaking, that they didn't want to become another Hampton Beach. We've got to have this more restrictive uh, zoning. And in the recent years, their equalized tax valuation was much higher than ours. This town, they were a richer town, and they paid more relatively or rate-wise to the state education tax because they were, they are a property to rich town. Just a, a few points. Uh, uh, they kept saying that uh, we're the neighbors uh, of uh, Rye, but of course there's a, another town in between. 
the other thing uh, that I like to say that Mr. Rice said that it doesn't cost the town any money. When I was a selectman in the 90s, I tried to reach the operations, the second in command of, uh, of the DPW for two days, Monday and a Tuesday. He was in Rye. They had a big problem with a line. It was blocked. And you'd see all these septic trucks coming down from Rye because it was blocked and they couldn't figure it out. For two days, we had Mr. Mellon, the second highest salaried person in DPW. And yet, the quarterly bill the copies came to the selectmen, the bill to Rye, never included his pay for two days. And I inquired, and the man manager asked inquiries to the department and was told Mr. Mellon was not in Rye. But that's what the staff at the DPW told me when I called and asked for him. So it did cost the town money. And that one incident, I know of. All right, all those in favor of ceasing, no, I've got the floor, as I indicated. All those in favor of ceasing discussion on Article 43, raise your voter card. Down card. All those opposed? Article 43 will go on the ballot as printed. Article 44. Shall the town of Hampton vote to direct the Board of Selectmen to timely notify the town of Rye that Hampton shall not renew the agreement between the town of Hampton and the town of Rye, New Hampshire, regarding treatment and disposal of wastewater upon the expiration of the first renewal period of that agreement, whose length has been designated by vote on the previous Article 43 of this 2009 Hampton Town Meeting? Majority vote required. In order to be timely, this notice must be given two years prior to the termination date of the agreement or any renewal period thereunder. This 20-year agreement, which was entered into in 1989, has enabled the town of Rye to dispose of its wastewater at Hampton's wastewater treatment plant in return for Rye's initial investment of approximately $5 million to establish the Hampton Rye sewer connection and Rye's continuing payment to Hampton of a proportionate share based on gallonage of both A, the use of Hampton's facilities, and B, Hampton's capital costs for the year 2008. These payments from Rye to Hampton total $93,027. Adoption of this article will have no impact on the town's tax rate. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to open discussion on Article 44, moved by Mr. Lally. Second. Seconded by Mr. Bateman. Mr. <coughs> Lally, would you like to speak to the motion, uh, to speak to Article 44? Uh, no, sir. I think most of it's already been said. Okay. Is there anyone? Uh, Mr. DeMarco, on Article 44, please. Uh, Mr. DeMarco, uh, 11 member and half. I'd like to make a, an amendment. I'd like to remove the word timely on the very first paragraph, and it should read, shall the town of Hampton vote to direct the Board of Selectmen to notify, uh, and so forth, the town of Rye. If it is our intention not to renew this, which apparently this article is probably saying to us, this would give the town of Rye now, after this town meeting, five years notice that we're not going to renew this, giving them adequate time to make provisions or to try to negotiate something different with us rather than wait three years and wait for that, and then do it at the, the two-year period. To tell them now we're not going to do it, and give them five years at least notice to, to be able to take care of their problem. That's my amendment. <coughs> so if I you don't know if anybody wants to second it or not. But put it in writing. You have a second with Mr. Moody. So you are, Mr. DeMarco is seeking to, by amendment, delete the, the word timely in line one. Of Article 44, okay. actually line two on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Put the word immediately. Immediately. Okay. But to replace the word timely to immediately. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Moody, would you support that uh, variation that Mr. DeMarco will remove the word timely and insert the word immediately? Well, that's what I'm talking about. Well, obviously, the article has to pass, right? Right. Yes. All right. Is there any further dis any discussion on the DeMarco amendment? 
All those in favor of the DeMarco Amendment, raise your voter card. Down card. All opposed. The DeMarco Amendment has carried. Any further discussion on Article 44 as amended? Yeah, Bob. Mr. Nichols. Yeah, um, I'd like to get some uh, clarification relative to uh, capacity utilization from the manager of the uh, Public Works Director. I have a little bit different perception than um, Sharon does, and I think um, whatever the accurate um, situation is ought to be understood. My impression is that we were nearing or at that magic 80% utilization number several years ago. And then with the implementation of the um, beach infrastructure drainage project that it diverted a lot of gray water that was going into the wastewater treatment plant and that we are now down more into the 65% um, or so level. Um, uh, I think we heard from Ms. Raymond earlier that it was at 87%, but she's at the podium, so I'll let her clarify that. Uh, that 87% I actually got from Harry Stewart from New Hampshire DES this past Tuesday when I saw okay. him at the New England Water Environment Association. We were up, Hampton was one of the communities up on a chart when they were talking about in wastewater infrastructure and our plant capacity at 87%. Okay, so. thank you. Fred, do you have any comment on that? I'm remembering back the presentations that we've had. I think it was actually from John Hangen as opposed to. The town received a notice last year, early in the year, that we are in excess of 80% of capacity. We appealed that. We have, have we have received another letter telling that we are not at 70% capacity. Since the modifications to the beach infrastructure, uh, they've looked at our new capacity figures and they've removed the restriction. So we have a letter from um, DES with regards to that. So I can't tell you what the exact figure is, but I understand it's less than 70%. We took about a million gallons a day out of the system uh, by uh, redoing the sewer at the beach. So, Anything unless something has changed, we don't know about Mr. Riley. Anything further on Article 44? Seeing none, we will move. Article 44 will appear on the ballot as amended by the DeMarco Amendment, and we will move, move on to, to restrict to reconsideration of Articles 40 through 44. Second. Motion to restrict reconsideration of Articles 40 through 44 has been made and seconded. All in favor, raise your voter card. Down cards. Any opposed? Article 45. Shall the town of Hampton vote in accordance with NHRSA 80 colon 52-C to authorize but not require the town clerk to accept payment of fees by credit card, provided that there shall be added to each amount due a service charge to cover the credit card company's charges to the town and any other actual cost for the use of the credit card service. Majority vote required. Adoption of this article of no impact on the town's tax rate. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 45? So moved. Moved by Mr. Bateman. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Lally. Mr. Bateman, would you like to speak to Article 45? I believe if you uh, read it at its face value, it's a step uh, of a modern nature. Many people are uh, paying by credit card be it for a variety of different reasons, but it also uh, not only services the uh, citizen, but uh, at times is uh, much easier for uh, us on this end. So uh, accepting the money in any form, as long as we're getting the money. Thank you, Mr. Bateman. Mr. Page. Just one quick uh, clarification. I thought when you, uh, as a business that takes credit cards, we're not allowed to add a fee onto the bill for taking the credit card with a credit card company as an agreement with a credit card company for taking your card. Are we allowed to do, is a town allowed to do that? I, I think it's a great idea. I like it. But I just want to make sure, is it legal for, uh, is it legal for us to do? Yeah, it's based on taxes. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we can. Anything further on Article 45? Seeing none, Article 45 will appear on the ballot as printed. Article 46, on the petition of James Workman and 25 additional registered voters, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate a sum not to exceed 30000 for the construction of a 15 by 30 foot pavilion type structure at the High Street Cemetery. Majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Recommended by the Budget Committee. The purpose of this structure 
shall be to provide a covered area for the town's veterans during the Memorial Day and other remembrances when the weather so requires. Such authorization shall include cost of design, procurement, construction, landscaping, together with all appurtenances necessary or desirable to complete such project. Fiscal impact note from the Finance Department, the estimated 2009 tax rate impact is one cent per thousand dollars evaluation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 46? So moved. Moved by Mr. Second. Workman. Seconded by Mr. Bateman. Mr. Workman, would you like to address Article 46? It's essentially in, in summation of the article as it states. It's just that in years past at, at different remem remembrance ceremonies, the weather has been uncooperative, and we have some of the more experienced veterans in town who um, could, could benefit from the, the shelter the structure would provide. Ideally, that cost will be lowered by volunteers and, and, and donations, but I didn't want to assume that, so I put in a, a higher number. Thank you, Mr. Workman. Anyone else? Mr. Moody. The memorial lot in the High Street Cemetery was uh, petitioned money-wise by the Legion, and we built it later repaired the platform and for all the years if the weather is bad for Memorial Day we always went to the adjacent junior high school to the cafetorium and I don't see why that can't continue thank you mr. Moody anyone else on article 46 Mr. Workman. Just a quick response to that. I, I, I run this past the, the uh, commander of the American Legion before I did the petition because I wouldn't have done anything if I didn't think it had their support. And I know in the past five years alone, I can count at least two instances where the weather was less than cooperative and it was still held outside. Thank you, Mr. Workman. <coughs> anything further? Article 46 will appear on the ballot as printed. Article 47. I move to restrict reconsideration of 45 and 46. Second. There's a motion to restrict reconsideration of Articles 46 and 47, all in 45 favor. 45 and 46. 45. 45, excuse me, 45 and 46. All in favor, raise your voter card, down card, any opposed? Articles 45 and 46 are restricted. Article 47, upon petition of Frederick Rice, Brian Warburton, Mary Louise Woolsey, and more than 25 other registered voters, shall the town of Hampton, in support of its declared commitment to preserve the natural environment and to conserve precious and dwindling natural resources through the proper recycling and reuse of waste materials be required to purchase recycled or recycled content products for any and all town supply requirements whenever such products are reasonably available, provided that the cost is within 20% of the cost for an equivalent product made of non-recycled materials. Majority vote. Required is there a motion to open discussion on Article 47? Moved by Ms. Woolsey. There is a second, seconded by Mr. Plough. Ms. Woolsey, would you like to address Article 47? Very briefly, this is an outgrowth of the Waste Recycling Committee that Mr. Lally chaired that was a very successful committee, and I think all of us came out of there determined to do more for the town and for the environment, and that is an outgrowth of, of our efforts. Thank you, Ms. Woolsey. Mr. Rice. The definition of recycling includes the separate collection and processing and reuse of items that are thrown away. Uh, without the requirement to purchase and use, that circle is not completed and it's not a full recycling effort. The thing that creates the opportunity to recycle is the demand for recycled products. That's all this is, is an opportunity for the town of Hampton to step up and be counted and actually help to create that demand. It takes a lot of small increments of demand to create the market for recycled products. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 47? Seeing none, Article 47 will appear on the ballot uh, as printed. Article 48, I would entertain a motion on Article 48 to waive the reading right. of that article due to its length. Moved and seconded. Article 48 is uh, entitled a public event recycling ordinance. It's a petition article uh, by Frederick Rice, Brian Warburton, and Mary Louise Woolsey. Would Mr. Rice and Ms. Woolsey wish to speak to Article 48? A motion to uh, open discussion on Article 48 by Mr. Rice, seconded by Ms. Woolsey, Mr. Rice. 
This article is not a mandatory recycling article. It is a mandatory recycling container article. Uh, the solid waste ordinance that was previously uh, considered is the mandatory recycling. It says that you can't put any uh, recyclable materials into, the, into our transfer station. This just ensures that the opportunity is there for people to recycle. The thing that gave me the idea of trying to get this together and get support for this was last year at the Pizza Bowl, the Rotary Club's Pizza Bowl. There were no recycling containers, and so some 800 soft drink containers and water bottles and everything else that were sold went into the trash because there were no containers uh, to put recycling in. Uh, this year, much to my delight, exactly what I had hoped had happened, they have these nice little cardboard octagonal deals with lids on them. You use a, a plastic sack, a garbage sack in there, and it's got the little hole that you can put the can or the bottle in. People used it a tremendous amount. They got a tremendous amount of stuff out of there. That's what this does. And the penalties in here are intended only for the scoff laws who continually thumb their nose at it and refuse to do it. This is an easy thing to do. I'm currently looking into the availability of these type of containers. I've asked Principal Zito here at the high school, and he's going to have the facilities manager get me that information on <coughs> it can be procured at a nominal uh, basis, I'm sure. Uh, we're trying to make an, uh, an exception in here or a, an accommodation for commercial establishments that don't want to have a bright recycling container out in the middle of the floor in the bar, and they can do it on their own so long as it's recycled and not thrown into the trash. I think most of them claim they are doing this now anyway, so it should not be an inconvenience. This is mean, mainly to ensure that we have the means to do the recycling that's otherwise required. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Anyone else wishing to be heard on 48? Mr. Nyan? John Nyan from uh, Four Pennyman Lane. I, I just want to uh, just take a minute and uh, uh, give give uh, my support to this uh, to this warrant. Uh, I'd like to uh, highlight Section Two: uh, any indoor and outdoor public event. Um, as all of you know, <clears throat> for the first time uh, last summer, the uh, Chamber of Commerce um, had recycling at the Seafood Festival, and it was a, a very big success. And, and I think it showed as an example of what a community can do around recycling. So I support this warrant 100%. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Nyan. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 48? Seeing none, Article 48 will appear on the ballot as printed. Article 49, upon petition of Frederick Rice, Brian Warburton, Mary Louise Woolsey, and more than 25 other registered Voters, shall the town vote to establish a recycling education fund pursuant to RSA 31 colon 95 H Roman 1 small b majority vote required the money received from fines and fees for non-compliance with the town's public event recycling ordinance and solid waste ordinance shall be allowed to accumulate in this fund from year to year and shall not be considered part of the town's general fund unreserved fund balance the town treasurer shall have custody of all monies on the fund and shall pay out the same only upon order of the town manager. No further town meeting approval required. These funds may be expended only to provide, improve, or enhance programs and efforts to educate the public on the advantages and reasons to promote and practice recycling. Adoption of this article will, will create no increase in the town's tax rate and may actually reduce the tax rate if resulting recycling reduces the cost of the town of solid waste disposal. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 49? Moved by Mr. Rice, seconded by Ms. Wolsey. Mr. Rice, would you like to speak to Article 49? Yes, briefly. Uh, th this is the um, uh, what to do with the monies that are the, the penalties for non-compliance with the uh, uh, public event uh, ordinance. Um, the, the overwhelming majority or the, the unanimous conclusion of the recycling committee was that the easiest and best thing we can do is educate people more. And this, this would fund a means to be able to do that. Uh, so I, I'll say nothing further on that except uh, I would like to offer an amendment. Uh, the, the citation on this in the first line uh, that says, um, we go, RSA 31 colon 95-H1B should be, I'd like to offer an amendment that change that to 1A. It was erroneously, uh, the, the wrong citation was, was erroneously made. Mr. Rice has made a housekeeping amendment, seconded by Ms. Woolsey to change an RSA reference. Point of information when you get, when you're done. We've got that on the screen. Mr. Lally. The uh, Recycling Education Committee that's in uh, 
part of the town government now that was spawned from uh, our committee already has an account with funds in it. So is this a different one or is this going to be the same? Yes, Ms. Wilson. Yeah, uh, I think this is, de this is designed to be a separate fund funded by the fines and there, therefore the town in next year's budget, operating budget, should be able to take out the $500 for education and leave this as a self-funding operation so it doesn't have to So it won't interfere the with their... Well, it should, <coughs> it, it, this should be the one that takes over, basically. The main thing is to continue with the education process. Absolutely, yeah. They should no, no longer have to appear in the operating budget. This year is a stopgap to get it going until this can take over. Mr. Rice. Real brief, briefly, Bill, I, I don't think this is going to amount, hopefully this would not amount to a tremendous amount of money anyway, right, right. but a recycling education program <laughs> is not something that requires a tremendous amount of funding yeah, either. Right. But this, instead of just dumping money back into the general fund, if there are people who, who defy the recycling requirements and there are penalties involved, this just has to be <coughs> that benefits recycling as opposed to something else. Okay. That's all. Thanks. On the Rice Amendment. All those in favor, raise your voter cards, down cards. Any opposed? The Rice Amendment has passed, so the Article 49 reflects the revision to the RSA. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard on Article 49? Mr. Nyan. Mr. Moderator, I, uh, I also want to speak in favor of this, uh, this warrant article, but also would like to uh, make an amendment uh, to that, to where um, on paragraph two, fifth line after the, uh, the uh, town manager words, I would like to add town manager with advice and guidance from the Recycling Education Committee. So basically what I'm suggesting, well, let me make that as a motion speak to it after a second. Is there any second to Mr. Nyan's amendment to add to line five of the second paragraph of Article 49 with advice and guidance of the Recycling Committee? Seeing no second, the amendment fails. Anything further on Article 49? Seeing none, Article 49 will appear on the ballot <coughs> as amended by the Rice Amendment. I move to restrict reconsideration of 47, 48, and 49. Second. Move that we have a motion uh, to restrict reconsideration on 47, 48, and 49. It's been seconded. All those in favor, raise your voter cards, down cards, any opposed. We are restricted up through 47, 48, 49. Article 50. Shall the Town of Campton vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen pursuant to RSA 31 colon 19 to accept without further action by the Town gifts, legacy, and devices made to the Town to be held in trust for the establishment, maintenance, and care of libraries, reading rooms, schools, and other educational facilities, parks, cemeteries, and burial lots, the planting and care of shade and ornamental trees upon their highways and other public places, and for any other public purpose that is not foreign to their institution or incompatible with the objects of their organization, such authority to continue indefinitely until rescinded by a future vote of an annual or special town meeting, majority vote required. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 50? Moved by Mr. Pierce, is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Lally. Mr. Pierce, would you like to speak to Article 50? I uh, get the gist of it, but Aren't we already covered in this arena, or is this something we're not covered? Mr. Jarrell? Um, we are not covered as per DRA. Okay. What we do <coughs> have is we have the authority for appropriation of un unanticipated funds that come available during the year, uh, which requires its own separate procedure, a public hearing before expenditure. This article gets to the point of trust funds, uh, of anticipated monies. Say, for instance, for the cover for the bridge over the old stage ridge road. Okay. Hampton Falls has adopted this some years ago. For some reason, Hampton was not presented with it. Uh, another, there was another article uh, 
the uh, expenditure of monies for that another, another avenue for the uh, the galley hatch monies oh, okay. could have been put in a trust fund but we didn't have that vehicle to use this this adopts something that most towns adopt that we just don't have yet thank you thank you mr pierce mr moody what this does is take the power away from the town meeting which has always had this authority Accept trust funds and has in the past and give it and concentrate it in the uh, selectmen as we get closer and closer to a charter government. This is a combination of two RSA 19 trust fund laws <coughs> and it combines them, uh, a rel relatively new law, I guess, uh, the selectmen accept instead of town meeting. But the other is a law that says that selecting uh, the towns can accept trust funds for these matters. And it was written about 1901, and it includes schools, which I'm sure <laughs> I don't think the selectmen are, have the authority to accept school trust funds for the Hampton School District, for instance, or Winnicott. It, and the cemetery, uh, the uh, library law uh, for trust funds left specifically to library trustees says that they're the ones that, that go to town meeting to recommend whether the town should accept this trust fund for a library. The last time they got one was for $30,000, but they never went to town meeting because they didn't want anybody to know they had it. <laughs> And burial lots, that has something that has to be accepted by the town, regardless of anybody's vote. Uh, so I, I don't like this mixture, uh, to tell you the truth. And I don't see where uh, uh, Wooden Bridge uh, is in this list, either. Thank you, Mr. Moody. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 50? Seeing none, Article 50 will appear on the ballot as printed we are headed to the last warrant article article 51 before I read that I, I remind uh, and all of you are aware of it for, for those folks at home we will reassemble Tuesday March 10 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Winnicott High School gymnasium so we will be voting at a new locale we'll be voting at the Winnicott High School gymnasium on Tuesday March 10 from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. article 51 by petition of 25 registered voters, shall the town of Hampton, if any or all of the six collective bargaining agreements are defeated or do not appear on the 2009 warrant. Article XX uh, uh, police officers, Article XX police sergeants, Article XX public works employees, <coughs> Article XX teamsters, Article XX firefighters, and or Article XX fire officers authorize the governing body to call one special town meeting at its option to address the cost items only of the defeated or absent said article or articles majority vote required not recommended by the board of selectmen fiscal impact note finance department the estimated cost of a special meeting is eight thousand dollars with 2009 tax rate impact of 26 tenths of one cent per thousand dollars of valuation is there a motion to open discussion on article 51 Moved by Mr. Pierce. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. DeMarco. Mr. Pierce, do you wish to speak to the article? Ms. Wolsey. Mr. Moderator, I wanted to uh, inquire as to the uh, recommended recommendation by the Board of Selectmen. I'm not aware that they are either authorized, required, or authorized to address a non-money petition article. Why is there a recommendation here? There is money involved. Well, no, there's no money involved in the article. There may be money involved, but there's no money raised and appropriate or any other such stipulation in this article. Well, we would I have would to like raise $8,000. I would, uh, but, 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 but the petitioners, this is a private petition article, and the petitioners have not stipulated any money, nor have they stipulated any raise and appropriate. So I would just like a ruling as to the appropriateness to be included on the warrant of the not recommendation not recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, but just because they didn't add it in doesn't mean it's not going to cost the town money to do. 
I think just didn't add it I, I, let me jump let me jump in here for a second I, I I understand Ms. Woolsey's uh, inquiry to be that only certain warrant articles are required and uh, I, I think the converse of that is entitled to bear a legend of a recommendation or not recommendation my understanding is that those are quote unquote special warrant articles that involve certain topics and involve money as Mr. Lally mm -hmm. stated um, I can't put my fingers on the section of the RSAs that addresses that at this moment. I'll defer to Mr. Gerald um, to address Ms. Woolsey's uh, question as to whether, as she stated, the Article 51 does not seek to raise and appropriate, uh, but as Mr. Lally has stated, it does likely incur a cost. Yeah, I, th I think uh, certainly. Yeah. yeah. It would not require a selectman statement that they don't recommend it one way or the other. If, if it's but I think they can still do so if they wish. Well, if, it's not re if it's not a requirement of the board to address this article, I would strongly object to having that recommendation printed on the warrant. Yeah, it was my understanding to follow up Ms. Woolsey's comment that uh, there are certain articles that must bear the legend, and then that's it. Um, then we don't get into making um, opinion statements on articles that, that don't uh, require the, uh, the legend. But as, I, as the hour is late and I'm flopping around to try to find that, but that's my, my sense of unless it's required, it's not supposed to be there, I guess is maybe a more articulate way to put it. Mr. Bridal. I'd have to wholeheartedly agree with Mary Louise. <coughs> uh, I don't think it should be there, and I would also hope that if the, uh, the Board of Selectmen are able to reach an agreement with, with the unions, did want to ratify these contracts as soon as possible and get this, this town moving forward with its town employees. We've had contracts that have been out, out of date for a long time, and I think these guys deserve the respect that if we're able to get those and get them negotiated and worked out, that we should be able to bring them forward with a special town meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Mr. Pierce. I think I'm going to have to go along with the selectmen on this one, and I usually don't agree with them all the time. Um, the negotiation period should be before the uh, deliberation and before all the article, uh, warrant articles with union contracts come to the budget committee. And once it passes that, it's sort of like uh, it all starts over again the next year. So, I mean, I, I can understand the sentiment maybe behind this, but I think that the selectmen have done the right thing and expressed how exactly how they feel about it. And I agree with the Board of Selectmen that if we do it in the middle of the year, so to speak, we're going to go, we should go through a long, lengthy process like we normally do to give it the full airing for the public and for everybody like me to complain and jump down about it or whatever or say okay. And if we have a special town meeting, that bypasses all those normal things that I think are Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Moody. There's uh, no RSA reference. Uh, is this 4013, Senate Bill 2, official ballot voting uh, matter? And if so, I kind of remember that it might be a selectman's article. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. But. Thank you, Mr. Well, uh, um, Mr. Moderator. Uh, you've drawn to my attention, of course, RSA 31 colon 5 Roman 3, which indicates that there can be a contingent article for those items that, for which cost items are defeated at the town meeting. And this article, however, is more than just those three articles that are in the warrant already. Well, it does reference absent articles as well. And, uh, in Article 51. I don't know whether that's in conformance with the statute or not. But. Well, what I'm saying is I think it goes beyond what the uh, <coughs> RSA 31 colon 5 Roman 3 allows to be addressed. Because of the reference to a absent articles. Right. Mr. Wright. Um, I think I have to agree with uh, Mrs. Woolsey on this as well. Uh, I think every, it's no secret in town that I'm not a huge fan of unions, but uh, I do believe that we need to uh, negotiate in good faith with the employees who serve us. And uh, I think that the addition of a, of, of, of a selectman's recommendation on this, uh, when it does not include the, the raising and appropriating of money, 
I think it's a gratuitous extra effort to try and defeat it. Uh, it's been discussed before in the past whether, whether Selectman's uh, recommendations do or do not have, a, have an impact on the public. I think that they do, and I think that a lot of people who don't otherwise understand it will follow a recommendation. I think that whether you do or don't like the, the warrant article, uh, and, and you know I may be for or against uh, some things about the contract negotiations, I think you have to leave open every single opening to be able to uh, come together Somehow, we spend 80,000 bucks, and I don't want to waste the 80,000 bucks. There's a way to come together that is not otherwise doable. I think we ought to do this. I'd offer an amendment to strike the not recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Well, I'm not going to entertain the amendment. It's, it's going to be something that's governed by state law. It's either required, and it's got to be there, or if it's not, it's not supposed to be there. So I think that's where Mr. Rice is. No, you've got to get to the podium. But I think that's where Mr. Rice is going, is, is, if, it, is if it has to be there, then he takes issue with the position, but it's entitled to be there. If it's not entitled to be there, then it's not entitled to be there. Right. So just fair is fair is the only thing I'm saying. Is if, it, if, it, if it has to be there, then so be it. But, but I mean, it does. Mr. DeMarco. Uh, just a point of listening, may turn. Just assume this article were to pass. And Excuse me. Assume this article were to pass, and there'd be a special town meeting. Wouldn't there still have to be a, uh, a, a vote by the general public and whatever? It wouldn't. The, the dollar figures could be discussed at the special town meeting, right? But wouldn't there still be a, a another meeting that would the people, the general public, would have to vote on it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right. So all this would do is open up talks to a money issue and then the general public would still vote on it again, right? The same would process, Mr. Moderator, the same process would have to right. be followed as if this was an annual town meeting, right. not a special. It would have to go through the same well, process. That's, the, that's what I wanted to explain to the general public. You would come and talk about it and you would still go like just a regular meeting. Again, we would go to a ballot vote. That's correct. Right. Thank you. Uh, Get to work. You know, in, in nine years of serving on this board, I don't think I've ever uttered the next sentence I'm going to utter, and if anyone calls me on it, I'll deny it. Um, I agree with Mrs. Woolsey. Um, what the? <laughs> maybe, maybe it's your whole kumbaya thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, and, and I mentioned that when, when the motion was made at the meeting, that I don't think that we should be getting involved in things that don't have a raise an appropriate element to them. Um, it is a slippery slope if we start going down there, and I think that, you know, as people said, it's kind of bad faith to be doing that. Gerald. Well, I think that, I think uh, Mr. Workman has a point where this is not an appropriation article per se, that uh, we should not be uh, uh, amending a petitioned article. I mean, having this language there right now and not added afterwards uh, amends the petitioned article before the fact. I don't follow you. Okay, petitioned articles are supposed to appear on the warrant for this meeting as is. Well, petition articles can be amended like any other article. They can be, but it hasn't been amended to add that language. The not recommended by the right. Board of Selectmen? Hasn't been amended yet. Uh, I, I think the issue, without belaboring it, is um, if it's a special, if it's a particular type of warrant article, then the, then there's a obligation to have a recommendation on it. If it's not, then it shouldn't have any form of recommendation on it. And I, at this late hour, haven't been able to, to I, I pointed out one section to you. Yeah. So I think that's the crux of the issue here, is um, whether this is the type of article, because, because as Ms. Woolsey pointed out, it doesn't uh, seek to raise and appropriate any money, whether it qualifies as an article that should bear a recommendation. But I, I think it should, before the fact, it should not have a recommendation or not by the selectmen. Is to have both it saying on the same thing for different reasons. Without amending it to add it, it shouldn't be there. So what are you suggesting to the body, that it should be removed? I, su I suggest it's illegal to have it there before the fact. Before what fact? Before the fact of this meeting. Okay. They've amended a petitioned article before the meeting. Who did? The selectmen. 
by what, putting that legend in there? In, inadvertently. Yeah. I, I've never considered those legends to be part of an article. And so well. I guess what I'm uh, uh, looking for here is are the board is the council to the board of selectmen saying that that legend should be removed and if so then let's remove it um, i think it should be removed but also i think there's a problem with this article well let's take it one at a time um, addressing the other factor yeah I mentioned. let's so are we um, on advice of council is the board of selectmen removing deleting on, on advice of council i would i would move and vote to delete that from the article that the consensus of the board? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's, if I could, thank you, Christine. Um, so now, Mr. Gerald, do you, do you want to do address anything further? I, I think there's a problem with this Warren article seeking to address uh, collective bargaining agreements that are not already on this warrant. Okay. So then I would <coughs> suggest that there's uh, two ways to deal with that. One, either the, someone in the body offers an amendment or if the article passes, then there'll be a legal opinion as to what can be uh, the subject of a special meeting or not. And I, I gather what Mr. Gerald is saying is that the Article 51 references six uh, uh, agreements, only three of which are on the warrant. And it does talk about cost items defeated. That would be the three contracts if they happen to meet that fate or absent and three are absent, and what Mr. Gerald is questioning is whether you can have a special meeting by virtue of 51 on absent items. Mr. Moderator, sir? Yes. Are these articles not reviewed before they come before the public, and is the petitioner not in some small way counseled when these come across the desk as to what might or might not need to be done to make them acceptable. I find it outrageous that at this point in time, and this is a pretty clean cut article, we know which three agreements are proposed. It seems to me it would take a couple of minutes for someone to, to attend. By the by, we're, we're accepting petitions, we're still accepting petitions anonymously. Every private petitioned article on any warrant should have the name at least of the initial petitioner. Mr. Rice, Mr. Warburton, and I have our names clearly up front so the public knows who is petitioning. And that should pertain, and we've talked about this for years, to every single petition article. Furthermore, I think it's outrageous, A, not to give some type of guidance to a taxpayer who's putting an article in there. The intent is clear. It seems to me someone could at least, even if they wanted to refer them to someone else, to check before they, they put in the petition. But I think this is really sad. And following the logic of you gentlemen, I submit that Article 14 falls into the same category. If there is a requirement to recommend or not, or if there is a requirement to, to not have any recommendation, we need to be consistent. And I am not comfortable that I have had any official ruling on my challenge to Article 14 with the selectmen's failure to recommend. So I think we're still in murky waters here, and, and I think these, these situations need to be resolved. I agree with what's happened on Article 51. I think it's a shame to have that happen when it gets here to the floor of the deliberative section. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Mr. Buck? Uh, we don't need a draft at 645. We need final product. If you want to address the meeting, otherwise I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourning the 2009 deliberative session. Thank you very much for your attendance. We will reassemble again. We're still in, we're still in session. We're still in session. On Tuesday, March 10, 7 a.m., Winnicott High School. I'd like to thank Winnicott for providing the hall to us. I'd like to thank Channel 22 and all of the workers of the Cable Committee for uh, putting together this broadcast. Thank you very much.